Choo choo. High five. Rock, rock, rock. I'm going to teach you how to make any book with pictures super fun for children, especially in the toddler age range. I'm always telling parents that it's not the specific book that you have, but it's the adult who's reading the book that can really make it come to life and make it a language rich experience for the child. Hi, my name is Adrienne and I am a speech language pathologist specializing in early intervention with babies from birth to three years old. I work with children who have language delays or disabilities that make communicating difficult. My role is to facilitate language development through parent education and teaching the parents of these children strategies that are research based. The strategies I'll teach you today include repetition, pointing, labeling, verbal routines, increased prosody or sing-songy voice, signs and gestures. So what I'll do is I'll walk you through one of my favorite books that I use all the time. It is this book. It is My First Words by Baby Basics and this is the 2011 edition. I think that they have a newer one um, that has a yellow background but they're both basically the same pictures on the inside and you can do the similar activities with both of them. You can see this one is well loved. I've used it a lot over the past year and I replace them every so often because they get kind of worn out. But what I like about this book is that it has the pages that are more firm. It's not going to tear as easily. It's not a board book, but they're sturdy enough that you can wipe them down with a rag if there's anything that gets on them because I do a lot of interactive stuff with these books and so sometimes there'll be Play-Doh on it or something kind of smashed into it so it's easy to wipe down. Okay, so when I start reading this book, I look at the pictures and I say, ooh, where's baby? Oh, baby, baby, aw, baby. And then I'll take the child's hand and I'll go chuck 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 Chugga chugga chugga. Choo choo. Where's choo choo? <gasps> choo choo. And for the bear, I always like to do bear, rawr, bear, rawr, and repeat that. And the kids sometimes will do that with their hands. They'll point, and, go, and even if they don't say it, they're still soaking that in. And for the duck, I do this motion quack, 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 quack. Sometimes for the baby, I'll do baby. Wah, wah. So you're incorporating some signs and gestures along with the word so that they're pairing together the visual elements along with the auditory elements. So then we open the book and I love how they do this on the first page because it allows for a ton of repetition. So don't skip over this first page just because you think it's a filler page. This one is so fun because you can really use repetition to introduce an early developing words such as duck or eye or beak or water. So what I like to do is I like to take their little hand and I have them point. I get their pointer finger up and shape their hand so that they're pointing. And I'll go duck, 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 <gasps> duck, 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 <gasps> Duck, 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 duck. So I'm taking a deep breath in between each thing and the kids think it's hilarious. And then once we get to the bottom, I start to say duck, duck. And then I pause and I wait to see if they'll repeat it. So then we go to the next page and what I like to do is I like to have them tap to turn the page along with the words turn page. So sometimes, you know, kids just wanna flip and flip and flip and that's when pages rip and it's crazy and they just want to flip to the end. So what I do is I block it and I do turn page and I do it in that kind of sing-songy voice and so even if they don't say that and repeat turn page sometimes they'll say turn or sometimes they'll just pat and that lets me know that they want to go to the next page. Now this is an intro page so then this allows for some repetition. Bear roar. This is a good chance where you can say ooh eyes, nose, can you tickle the bear's feet? And you can tickle, tickle, tickle. So then we get to this page and sometimes we'll do star and heart. And then sometimes I'll be like, where's baby? And there's a little tiny baby face right there and at the bottom. So that's helping them to look and scan. And sometimes I'll point with my finger, where's baby? So they can see the area that it's in. And then we do turn page. This is another page that allows for a lot of repetition. So 
What I like to do is they're normally pretty engaged because they're looking at the baby's eyes and all of these babies over here. And so um, kind of like with the ducks, I'll do baby, 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 <gasps> baby, 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 all the way to the bottom. And then a lot of times we'll talk about the baby's tongue right here. I don't know if you can see baby. And then I stick out my tongue and go, Lala. where's your tongue? And then we point to the baby's tongue. Then we always look for who has the glasses. Where are the glasses? Do you see the glasses? Where are the glasses? And you kind of can circle around where they are and then point. So your finger is something that's going to draw your child's eye to what you're looking at. And so um, in order to give them kind of a clue but not point it out directly, you can say where are the glasses and point to three to focus on or where are the glasses and then help them to point. Um, something we talk about is this baby is eating a banana and so we talk about eating. Then I like to pretend like we're smelling the baby's diaper and it's stinky, shoo-wee. So we go pee-you, shoo-wee, smell the diaper, shoo-wee, and they get a kick out of that. So then we turn page. This page is full of things that we do. This is great for action words and verbs, um, but you can also use it to give simple directions to your child that they can follow. So I'll start with whatever the child is looking at first, whatever I can see them looking at, we'll talk about. So if they're looking at the drum, I'll be like, ooh, drum, and then I'll be like, boom, 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 boom. All that repetition, drum, ooh, boom, 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 and they'll like to pat on the drum, or you could say pat, 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 pat. There's just some early developing words that they'd be able to imitate most likely. And then eating, ooh, apple, <laughs> crunchy. <laughs> and so you can do the sign for eat, and you can point to the picture of the apple. And then kicking a ball, so lots of kids know the word for ball already. And so you can point to the ball and be like, ooh, can you kick? Kick your feet, kick your feet. And then if they're sitting on your lap, if they're not kicking their feet yet or following your direction, you can take their little feet and kick them back and forth and be like, ooh, he's kicking the ball. And then again, for this baby at the bottom, we always smell the diaper and they think it's hilarious. So we go, P-U, P-U. And sometimes when we've done this book enough, the kids will go straight for this one and start smelling the diaper. It's, it's adorable. Then for this guy over here, he's stretching up in the air. And so I always say, oh, can you high five the boy? Give him a high five. So we high five his hand right here. High five. And then I like to ask him to tickle the boy's belly. Tickle his belly. Tickle, 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 tickle. Tickle his feet. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Tickle his hands. Tickle, tickle, tickle. And then we can look for the baby's hair, the baby's eyes, the baby's hands, the baby's shoes. There's all kinds of things that you can look at here. So then we turn page. This page is great because it's all about a daily routine around eating. And so it's adorable. Some kids that I work with have tried to pick up these forks and spoons before thinking that they were 3D. So um, we talk about the vocabulary in here and something that I like to do is I like to label it for the kids if they don't know the words yet instead of saying what's that 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 that gets really overwhelming to a child so when you're reading try to avoid saying what's that what's that what's that what's that and instead giving your child some simple directions to follow like ooh can you drink from the cup mmm <sighs> delicious <sighs> and they'll likely imitate that sound after you. And then you can be like, ooh, let's get the spoon and eat in the bowl. And pretend like you're eating from the bowl. And then you can talk about the baby is drinking and you can point to the baby's eyes, ears, fingers. And you can talk about the vocabulary or the sign for milk. Sometimes kids will see this and think it's juice, so you can talk about that. And then you turn page. This is one of my favorite pages because 
it's really interactive and we can pretend that we're eating. A lot of times children don't know the words for cucumbers or kiwi, so those are ones that we like to talk about. Um, but also you can pretend that you're drinking this milk. You can be like, ooh, I'm thirsty and go, <sighs> delicious or yummy. And then for carrots, you can have some repetition. Carrot, carrot, carrot. And then you could take their little finger and go carrot, carrot, carrot. And then you could do cheese. You could do the sign for cheese, which looks like this. Cheese. Then um, for grapes, I always like to either say grape, grape, grape. Or if they're not able to say and repeat that kind of word just yet, I like to say, ooh, grapes. Let's pop them. Pop, 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 pop. Or sometimes kids will say bubble. And so you can point them out. But always say the word grape and then interact with them the book and the picture. And then we can do the sign for bananas, which I'll show you, looks like this. Banana, it's like you're peeling a banana. So your pointer finger's up and then you go like this. Banana. And then apple, I always like to pretend to eat that because it's crunchy, so I go, you want a bite? And then I give them a bite and a lot of times kids will imitate that. And then we turn page. This one's all about clothes that we wear, and kids love looking for the hat, of course, and you can sign hat. And then for this jacket down here, it's labeled sweater on the page, but I call it a jacket, and I always have them pretend to zip. Can you zip? And really emphasize those sounds that you're saying. Zip. And then we talk about her dress, and we tickle her feet, and we see her beautiful hair, and it's curly, and we say curly, ooh, it's so curly. And then we look for the shoes, where are the shoes, can you find the shoes? And then sometimes I'll say, can you kick your feet, can you kick your shoes? Then when we look at the socks, if they're wearing socks that day, I like to show them my socks, and I like to pull my sock out and then pop it, so it like snaps back into place, and I'll go pop, pop and we look at the socks and then we pop our own socks so that they're seeing this picture, they're looking at their socks, they're looking at my socks, they're feeling their socks. It's a multi-sensory experience instead of just a flat picture on the page. And then we look at the pants or jeans and then I say, where are the pockets? Ooh, pocket, pocket, pocket. And then we look for our pockets and our pants and then we can take something that we're playing with like maybe a little toy animal or something that's small and we put things in our pockets and we try to put them in this pocket and then we say uh oh too big and then we can turn page so there's lots more pages in this book that i won't get through all the way for this one the rocking horse this little boy's on a rocking horse i always like to go rock 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 so that they can see that this makes that motion and so um, you're creating a verbal routine with that motion so that each time you turn to this page, the child thinks, oh, rock, 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 rock. So I've had children who have taken the book from my hands when they're sitting on my lap, and when they get to this page, they go, ah, 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 because they remember that that's what we do on this page. So it's really fun and interactive for them. Lots more pages with vehicles and things outdoors and animals lots of animals there and then I really like this bath time routine page because you can pretend to wash the baby you can pretend to squeak the duck or quack 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 you can talk about the sponge and you can talk about the towel dry off and there's a potty down there so sometimes what I'll do is I'll take anything that's nearby um, like a small towel or a washcloth or even just a toy that's soft and we'll say, ooh, let's wash the baby. Wash, 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 wash. And then we say, ooh, let's dry the baby. Dry, 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 dry. If you can see this baby has bubbles on him, we say, ooh, bubbles, pop, 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 pop. And then towards the end of this book, there's numbers, and I don't focus on the numbers at this age quite yet, but what I like to do is use this as an opportunity for repetition. So there are some trains and so we might say choo-choo, 
choo choo, choo choo, choo choo, choo choo, on and on, or say train, train. And then there's bike, bike, and you can also point out the wheels here. Wheel, 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 wheel. And then there's cars, and there's bears, and dinosaurs, and rockets, so you can do the same thing with that. It goes all the way up, so there's lots of babies that you can do the repetition with. You can do that with ball, duck, pencils, and then at the end you have your shapes. And um, what I like to do with these is if you have a shape sort or toy or something that comes with shapes already, is I take them and have them match them. And if that's a little bit too tricky, then I do some hand over hand. So I'll take their hand in mine and be like, ooh, a triangle triangle and then we'll put it on there and say triangle and match them to the shape and then the very last page is kind of like the first with a bunch of these cars and so we'll either say car 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 or we might say beep 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 that's an easier word to say it's kind of a sound effect or you can talk about the wheel, 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 or you can say drive. There's all kinds of language that you can target just from this basic back page that at the very end of the book. So then when you finish up, you can close it and say all done. And then you can look, these four pictures are the same ones that were on the front. And so it's a great time to review and see what they remember. And then you're all done. Reading to your child is a great way to facilitate language development and making it fun is something that will encourage your child to want to bring you books to read and will encourage you to have fun trying to be creative with how you can make it interactive and more engaging for your child. If I was to just read this book, I would say teddy bear, train, duck, baby. We'd open it up. We'd skip to the first page. We wouldn't do any of that repetition there. And we might say, my body, girl, boy, can you touch your toes? Funny faces, can you touch your nose? So as you can see, that's not nearly as interactive. It's a great place to start with those questions and the words reading them on the page. But it's not nearly as engaging and back and forth with your child as if you were to just look at the pictures, focus on what your child is seeing and maybe thinking, and really focus on the language that they would need to use in pointing out things in their environment. I hope this was helpful to you and you got some good tips to take away to really boost your child's language development. I'll be posting occasional videos like this where I feature a toy or book or something that I use as a strategy for parents. And also, I release a new sign language video each Thursday, so you can stay tuned for those as well. Thanks for watching, and you can subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos like this. This video is a collaboration with JDA on YouTube. She has amazing videos about Montessori activities, sensory, literacy, math, fine motor skills, logic activities, and much more. She focuses on brain enhancing toys, and I'm constantly getting fresh, fun ideas from her. I encourage you to also subscribe to her and check out her channel. You can click the link to her latest video about toddler speech and vocabulary activities in the description box for this video.